Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me today. This is episode 45 of Hockey on the Spot. And for today, we are going to go over the preseason scores from last night, um, September 15th, 2013. Now, there were a lot of games last night, seven games, and most of them were high-scoring games. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it, starting with the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Columbus Blue Jackets winning their first preseason game in overtime by a final score of 5-4 to four in front of their home crowd. Uh, Columbus goal scored by Artem Anisimov on the power play, assisted by Nikita Nikitin and Marion Gabrick. Um, James Wisniewski on the power play, assisted from David Savard and R.J. Umberger. Mark Latestu would score also, assisted by Blake Como and Jack Skilly. Cam Atkinson and would also score, assisted by James Wisniewski. And then the overtime winner, 4 minutes and 38 into overtime with twenty, a little over 21 seconds left in overtime. Ryan Murray, with the youngster who missed all of last year because of an injury, was supposed to make the roster last year but didn't because of the injury. He scores the game winner, assisted by R.J. Umberger and Mark Latestu. And the goaltenders were also pretty solid. They both split some time. <laughs> um, Curtis McElhaney would play the majority of the game, making 24 saves on 26 shots, finishing with a 9.23 save percentage. And Oscar Dansk would take over the rest of the game with an 8.18 save percentage, making 9 saves on 11 shots. <laughs> For the Pittsburgh Penguins, they get scoring contributions Hints from James Neal, assisted by Bo Bennett. They got the opening goal of the game just 47 seconds in. Uh, then after that, Chuck Kobasu, who is the training camp invitee for the Pittsburgh Penguins, coming over from the Colorado Avalanche. He gets, he gets a goal, assisted by Tom Kuhnhackel, the German forward, and Andrew Ebbett. Um, then after that, after no scoring in the second period, Dustin Jeffrey would open the third period scoring on the power play, assisted by Brian Dumoulin and Andrew Ebbett. And then the final Pittsburgh goal would also come on the power play. It would be Chuck Kobasu's second of the game, assisted by Tom Kuhnhackel and Dustin Jeffrey. But ultimately, the Penguins would lose in a game in which they outshot the Blue Jackets 37-25. to um, and the goaltending, the goaltending was just okay. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury played most of the game, playing two, two, two full periods, making ten saves on twelve shots and eight thirty three save percentage. And Jeff Zatkoff would take over the rest of the game, making ten saves on thirteen shots, a seven sixty nine save percentage. Yeah, Jeff Zatkoff. Um, so congrats to the Columbus Blue Jackets for a big win there. The Toronto Maple Leafs, <laughs> Leafs would come up with a big win over the Philadelphia Flyers. Here's a game in London, Ontario. That is where the game would be held, the home of the London Knights of the Ontario ha Hockey League. However, the, it would be the Philadelphia Flyers that would be considered the home team. They would get the last change despite the fact that most people were there for the Maple Leafs. Now, there is no box score for this game, so we will not have the assists, but we will have the goal. We do have the goals here. The Toronto Maple Leaf goals scored by Nazem Kadri, who scored a highlight reel goal on a toe drag, Troy Bodie, and Mason Raymond, and then Paul, defenseman Paul Ranger would score the game-winning goal. He's the guy, the guy really to watch for the Toronto Maple Leafs this preseason. And then for the Philadelphia Flyers, they after they were surrendered a three nothing lead, they got goal contributions from Braden Shen, Doug Clarkson, who is the younger brother of Dave Clarkson, and Nick Cousins. Um, so um, that was so that was big. Um, and M Mason Raymond would finish the game making twelve saves on fifteen shots, while Toronto's starter. Turned aside 14 of 17 shots. Don't know who exactly started in the game 
for them. So um, we don't really have the goaltending in uh, for you guys for this game. There is no box score for this game, so not much info to give. But congrats to the Toronto Maple Leafs winning on a, what was a very special night for them, even though they were considered the road team. This is the big scoring game aim right here now. The St. Louis Blues come up with a big 6-5 to five victory in a shootout against the Dallas Stars. The St. Louis Blues at Dallas Stars. <laughs> and what a game this was. The shots pretty much even. Dallas third, but would win the shots category 38-35. But, oh, but what matters is what the final score of the game was. But we'll start with the St. Louis Blues. <laughs> um, they their goal scoring they they got their scoring started with Maxime Lapierre scoring two goals, one on the power play. The first one was even strength assisted by Ryan Reeves and Ian Cole, and the second one was the power play goal assisted by Sergei Andronov and Roman Polak. Um, <laughs> Then their next goal would be scored by Sebastian Wanstrom, who it, who would score unassisted to tie up the game three three, and then to give the, and then after that to tie the game up at four, Adam Cracknell would score for the St. Louis Blues, assisted by Keith Coin and Yanni Hakimpa, um, who was one of the St. Louis Blues top ten prospects, and then when they were trailing. 5 to 4 Ryan Reeves would tie the game on a deflection but from Sir, a shot from Sergey Andronov so he would get the lone assist on that <laughs> and then the Dallas Stars scoring they opened up the scoring a minute 17 into the game <clears throat> and they got the first two goals their first goal coming on a, an early power play which was scored by Eric Cole assisted by Alex Chison and Tyler Sagan, the new the newest member of the Bo uh, Dallas Stars coming over from the Boston Bruins. Then Kevin Connaughton, who they got in the Derek Roy trade with the Vancouver Canucks, would score on a wrister, assisted by Cody Eakin. Then after that, after the game was all tied up, Tyler Sagan would score on a power play goal, assisted by Eric Cole and Sean Horkoff. Um... <laughs> And then it was Valeri Nachushkin time, folks. He would then score two goals for the Dallas Stars. The first one assisted by Jamie Oleksiak and Luke Gazdick. And then, and then his second goal was unassisted. Um, that gave the Stars a 5-4 lead before, of course, Ryan Reeves' his tying goal. And then in the shootout, <laughs> only one per player would convert in the shootout. Vladimir Tarasenko of the St. Louis Blues would be the only converter in the shootout. Kevin Shattenkirk, Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, and Valeri Nachushkin would all fail in their attempts. So the St. Louis Blues would win in a shootout. And, of course, the goaltenders. Um, <laughs> the St. Louis Blues would go roll with Jake Allen for the entire game. He had an 868 save percentage, making 33 saves on 38 shots. As for the Dallas Stars, they split with between their goaltenders, almost exact time between Jack Campbell and Dan Ellis. Jack Campbell would make 14 saves on 17 shots and an 8.24 save percentage, um, and Dan Ellis would make 16 saves on 18 shots and an 8.89 save percentage. He is the newest backup goaltender in Dallas. So, congrats to the St. Louis Blues on a humongous preseason win, even though it is only preseason. Next up, another shootout game, the Buffalo Sabres at the Montreal Canadiens. <coughs> Final score, 5-4 to four in a shootout in favor of the Buffalo Sabres. Um, Sabres get their scoring from first, first from Zemgis Gergensens, who would score an unassisted goal shorthanded. So the first shorthanded goal of the preseason, scored by the Latvian forward, picked 14th overall in 2012. <laughs> That the next goal would be scored by defenseman Jamie McBain, assisted by Steve Ott and Billy Leno. Then Zemgis Gergensen would score again, assisted by Kevin Porter and Mark Pesic. And then finally, Colton Gillies, who they got from the Columbus Blue Jackets, would get a goal assisted by Rasmus Ristolainen and Cody McCormick. Yep, yep, Cody McCormick. 
So big <laughs> game for the Buffalo Sabres and the goaltending. Um, they saw some split time with their goaltending. Matt Hackett would make 11 saves on 12 shots, a 917 save percentage. And Jonas Enroth, 10 saves on 13 so shots, a 769 save percentage. Um, so congratulations to them. And the Montreal Canadiens, their regulation scoring, they opened the scoring. Michael Bourneval would get the only goal of the first period, assisted by Michael McCarron and Jared Tenorti. Then... Michael Bourneval would get his second of the game after Buffalo tied it up, assisted by Martin St. Pierre and Greg Paterin, or Paterin, um, so good there. Next, Montreal would score on a power play, goal by Eric Nystrom, a different Eric Nystrom, mind you. This one's from Sweden, assisted by Jared Tenorti and Greg Paterin again. And then in the third period, Martin St. Pierre would score a power play goal, assisted by Michael Mat Karen and Greg Paterin. So Greg Paterin with three assists in this game. And the goaltenders were good too. Were solid too. Um, Zach Fucali would play the majority of the game, making 13 saves on 15 shots and 867 save percentage. And Peter Budai would also play 10 saves on 12 shots and 833 save percentage. However, once again, only one guy would convert in the shootout. And that would be Mikhail Grigorenko of the Buffalo Sabres. Drew Stafford, Alex Galchenyuk, Martin Rewai, and Brendan Gallagher would also get opportunities. But Mikhail Grigorenko would score the only shootout goal. So congrats to the Buffalo Sabres. The Ottawa Senators at the Winnipeg Jets would have the lowest scoring game of t t last night's action. Um... <laughs> The Ottawa Senators would come on top over the Winnipeg Jets by a final score of 3-1. to one. Mind you that the Winnipeg Jets played uh, Saturday night against the Washington Capitals in the Craftville Hockey Challenge in Belleville, Ontario. They lost that game. They lost this one as well. Now, Ottawa would get their scoring from Buddy Robinson, assisted by Troy Rutkowski, the superstar defenseman from the Portland Winterhawks, and Jim O'Brien. Bobby Ryan, the former Anaheim Duck, would also score, assisted by Eric Carlson and Milan McCulloch. And then, to top it all off, Milan McCulloch would score on the power play, assisted by Eric Carlson and Jason Spezza. And the goaltending was good as well. Robin Leonard would play the majority of the game, 40 minutes, making 17 saves on 18 shots, a 944 save percentage. And then the other goaltender, Andrew Hammond, he saw... The last period of play, he went perfect 10 for 10 with a perfect 1,000 save percentage. And so the and the lone score for the Winnipeg Jets, Matt Halischuk, who scored an unassisted goal. Um, but for them, only one goaltender would see action. Michael Hutchinson saw all the action, making 29 saves on 32 shots and 906 save percentage. So, um, congrats to the Ottawa, Ottawa Senators on a big win there. And last but not least, the split squad games. There was a split squad game last night between the Los Angeles Kings and the Phoenix Coyotes. Starting with the squad A game in Los Angeles, Phoenix Coyotes at Los Angeles Kings. The Phoenix Coyotes blew the Los Angeles Kings out of the water with a 5-1 to one win. Um... <laughs> Goals scored by Gilbert Brule on the power play, assisted by David Runblad and Ethan Lerick. Rob Klinkhammer on the power play, assisted also by David Runblad and Chris Brown. Brandon Yip, assisted by Andy Mealy. He actually scored two goals, his second goal coming unassisted. The, the la and then the final Phoenix Coyotes goal, not listed here. However, I know who scored it. Guillaume Latendresse, who was... Invited on a pro tryout contract from the Ottawa Senators would score, assisted by Andy Mealy and Brandon Yip, um, or Meal, um, and that, so they were absolutely brilliant, and they saw a split in goal, basically, they, bas yep, they saw a split in goal, Louis Dominique would not play, would play less of the game, but he was the one who let up the goal. Ten sa but still a good game. Ten saves on 11 shots and 909 save percentage. And then the goaltender that went perfect, 
Thomas Grice, their signing from the San Jose Sharks, who figures to be their all-time backup. He went perfect 15 for 15. So congratulations to him. And as for the Los Angeles Kings, the only scorer for them, Slava Voinov from the point, assisted by Matt Fratton. He would have the lone assist. And Matthew Garan would play the entire game. He played absolutely awful. Only 16 saves on 21 shots and a 762 save percentage. He is fighting for the full-time backup job. He is battling Ben Scrivens. Honestly, though, my money at this point is on Ben Scrivens. And then last but not least, the Squad B game. Los Angeles Kings at Phoenix Coyotes. The Phoenix Coyotes would come on top in this game as well. But not before the Los Angeles Kings took a 2-0 lead. But first, we'll discuss the Phoenix Coyotes' goal since they were the winners. Starting with a shorthanded goal scored by Jordan Schwartz, assisted by Brandon McMillan. <laughs> followed by a power play goal scored by... Michael Bodker, assisted by Shane Doan and Keith Yandel. Another power play goal scored by Shane Doan, assisted by Radim Verbata and Keith Yandel. And then finally, Keith Yandel would score the Coyotes' second short-handed goal of the game, assisted by Martin Hansel and Max Domi, the, for the son of former NHL enforcer Ty Domi. And the goaltending was brilliant. <laughs> Mike Smith. Played the majority of the game, making 15 saves on 17 shots and 882 save percentage. And then the um, the other goaltender, Michael Lee, would play the final period of play, going a perfect seven for seven. So congratulations to him. But again, this happened. All this happened not before the LA Kings took a two nothing lead in the game. They scored just 51 seconds into the game. Tanner Pearson. The, their first overall pick from 2012, the final pick in the first round of that draft, got a goal assisted by Brandon Cozen and Andy Andreoff, who figures to be an, an, an instigator in this league. That was the first L.A. goal. And then the second one coming not too long after that, Brandon Cozen, after getting assist, would get the goal unassisted. Um, and once again, the goaltending in this game, not good. Ben Scrivens would see all the playing action in this game, um, making 30 saves on 34 shots and 882 save percentage. So he made a lot of saves, but again, he let up four goals. So a big night for hockey tonight um, and uh, last night, excuse me. And tonight it's only going to get even better, more action tonight. And now with a couple minutes remaining on this blog, just a few quick just a few really, really quick updates. A rule change that players are not allowed to tuck in their jerseys anymore, which personally I'm a little saddened by because I love the jersey tuck. It's one of my favorite things, especially on Alex Ovechkin. The Detroit Red Wings now have 17 players with the signing of Dan Cleary. Thomas Tatar originally thought he was going to be the odd guy out, but they have informed him that he will not be the odd guy out. They are going to make an attempt to try to trade both of Jordan Tutu and Corey Emerton. So hopefully for the Detroit Red Wings, they'll get that done. Zach Ronaldo left last night's Leafs-Flyers game with an upper body injury and did not return, so hopefully he'll be okay. Um, also, Rostislav Kleslo would leave um, the Squad B game against the Los Angeles Kings. He had to be taken off the ice via a stretcher, um, courtesy of an open ice hit from Los Angeles Kings forward Jordan Nolan. Tim Thomas has informed the Florida Panthers that he will be joining the team. He will attend on a pro tryout contract, but who knows if he will play any preseason games, but he will be there at least for the practices, and he could sign as soon as today. And last but not least, former Montreal Canadiens forward Jeff Halpern has signed with TPS of the Liga in Finland. So a good deal for him there. All right, guys, that'll do it for episode 45 of Hockey on the Spot. Join me again tomorrow with more preseason scores and updates. So until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfield. I'm Brandon Barenfield. See you guys again tomorrow. Thank you and have a great day.